Welcome back for our third match of the day. This is the round of 32, Manti XC versus Anarud H6K playing Gaels. Wow, this is a, a leader that I did not expect to see in this tournament for the Paso Flora Championship. And I'm very curious to see what he's going to do with this. Knowing that he's against a removal uh, Itni, or at least assuming that he's against the removal Itni, we know from Manti's first game that he's featuring heavy dosage of removal. But also the weather. Uh, what kind of gales is going to be able to overcome something like this from their opponent? Uh, I know that Velors Rouge, one of the close friends of myself and the stream, has played Gales before, and it's been particularly difficult the way he plays it. Very clever. But other than that, I haven't seen too many players really venture into trying to make Gales work, as, of course, anytime he uses his ability, it's a bit of a target for Igni, as well as other removals, such as Bork or Scorch, in some cases. We do see early removal come out, as the Wyvern's going to take... Manti's unit off the board, but the last raid in return will clear off the entire range row from Anarud. And only two Wild Hunt Riders getting played here means that perhaps one is in hand, or he's only running two. More likely that one's in hand. Uh, Manti XC not at any shortage of means to remove these from the board, as he uses his second last raid and takes them out. And wondering if Anarud is running some necker warriors perhaps and that's why he was content with keeping a wild hunt rider or perhaps he had difficulties in the mulligan phase and was left with no real choice as to what he was going to be keeping white frost comes out against the monsters player and he ends up bringing the foglets to the board which is unfortunate but it does make yave playable. so this play seems a little odd for manti but i think his line of thought is that he wants to be able to play yaven into weather on round one not knowing what to expect against Anarud's deck, and having the weather on the field makes it much more doable than throwing out at 11 strength normally. He will play it onto the range row, remove the Foglets, and he even sits there at 1 strength, but he's against 12 strength still now. He is up a card, so 7 to 6. If you can play 2 and win it, it's not too bad, but the Siri will return to Anarud's hand, so it will be two card disadvantage if he does play out to try and win here and it's questionable whether or not it's going to be worth it uh, seems like he's gonna to have to dig for a real answer oh and he hits the decoy not a horrible thing to have in your graveyard especially if you're an ethnic player running a glyce but certainly wasn't the answer and now he's definitely got to be tempted with that pass button i think passing would be fine but we do know that manti xc is a particularly aggressive round one player and he finds the Tremors, brings the total down to 9 strength that he has to try and trump. The problem is 8 strength is gold, so removal is not going to get you too far. And if he's willing to sack Siri here, it will win him the round. But once again, he will be down 7 to 5 going into round 2 if he does do that. And that kind of card disadvantage could be risky, especially since Anarud has thinned out his deck a considerable amount, having used uh, Foglets... Arrakis and Wild Hunt Riders. So he's definitely going to be hitting some cards that he has teched into the matchup as maybe priority cards. But only two Foglets came out too from Anarud, right? So maybe there's a Foglet in his hand as well. Perhaps he's trying to set up a Necker Warrior play. It's really hard to tell. Especially not knowing what's going on with many monsters decks in this meta really that would make it to tournament play he's gonna throw lacerate and a uh, archer to the grave oh man what is going on here Manti's gonna play into the wild hunt rider take him out four to six oh he wins the round but at what cost uh maybe if he top decks the glyce here he can make his way back into decent card positioning but down three cards. Not a position you want to be in against anyone, really. And we'll see how Anarud responds this round as he's opted to make Anarud go first. 
We know that he has the Syrian hand. It wouldn't be too bad of an opener. You saw how difficult it was for Manti to climb in terms of raw strength last turn. That has to make him feel confident about his deck. And he's going to instead open up with Leshen. Which is interesting. If he is running Necker Warriors, then... You could understand why he drops Lush and he wants to be able to get some of the Necker Warriors okay. on the play, get some copies of the Foglets, but Manti comes out with an immediate answer and may seem very lucky, but he had already used two Lacerates, so uh, depending on how much removal actually is inside of his deck, he probably could have assumed you know, a certain percentage that seemed reasonable to find the Tremors there. But wow, Gauntaro Dim comes out from Adarud and removes <laughs> the single... Elven Merc from the table, and that's actually a pretty efficient play. Eight strength on your side of the board, with three strength removal on theirs. Gronto Dim, not the most popular of monster cards, but gets the job done there, and Avalok will follow, but Avalok finds a Glyce for the otherwise struggling Manti XD, and now he has a shot. Uh, if he passes here, Siri comes back to hand. It's only eight to six. And he has a Glyce. But instead he's going to replay Avalok. He's going to do it that way. I'm not sure if replaying Avalok is better than trying to get out of Siri Decoy. But he might be struggling with the idea that Anarud is running removal. So how reliable is it going to be to keep anything decoyable on the board for long enough to get that through? Bork comes into hand as well. So if there is a chance for Manti XD down this many cards, it's going to be through a Syngrim Aglias Bork. And he has all three of those cards in hand. So we'll get to see the full strength of Anarud's deck here in round three. Let's see if he has answers for these things. But it looks like Manti is not done playing it. He's going to throw down the Bork as well this turn. Puts him at 17 strength. So it does put him up. It makes Anarud have to play again. In a situation where he probably doesn't want to play anything out of his hand. So, you know, it's kind of a questionable decision for Manti. But it does fit his play style. He is a very, very aggressive player. And we'll see how Anarud wants to respond to this. He was toying with the idea of using Gales. Uh, Manti, through playing Bork, essentially is forcing himself to play out two, three turns to try and get value out of it. And I wonder how much it's going to take for Manorud to try and stop him from playing out. But it does look like the Giant Toad comes out, so I'll cycle through one card. Giant Toad eats a five strength unit, I believe. Puts him at ten. No removal in Manti's hand right now. He will play a Blue Mountain Commando. So he's committed to try and get this Bork off. Which is very interesting. Alzer's Thunder will take Blue Mountain Commando off the board, but will make Gronto Dim's little buddies the secondary target of Bork when Bork pops. Minty could natures uh, into that Alzer's Thunder if you would like to, but that's really just stalling for a turn right. to make sure Bork gets off successfully. Instead, he'll find another Tremors out of an Elven Merc. This round is very nervous. It's very, very questionable. And there's a Siri that we knew was in Anarud's hand. He plays that out, does lose the Toad. Of a Merc goes down as well. Mandy has no real options to continue this round now. He can't decoy with a Glyce. He can't Nature's Wish for anything other than Alzheimer's Thunder, which wouldn't have any targets. Or actually, Stemmelford's Tremors is the most recent. That doesn't have any targets either. And a Syngrim, it's a little bit premature to throw a Syngrim when your opponent has this many cards. We're talking about a hybrid removal uh, muster monster player. The likelihood of them being able to deal with two strength units, it's pretty strong. As well as the fact that Fog is on the board. So I think Manti actually has to pass here. I'm almost certain he has to pass here. But knowing that he's down so many cards, it could force him into a more desperate scenario where he wants to try and find value. He's tempted, he's toying with the pass, but he does pass, which must be the right decision. Siri's going to come back to hand, does end up 4-6, and 
this is one of the other issues with Gales, right? He's been through a lot of his muster units already. So for him to find value means that he has to play a unit onto the board that has occupies multiple spots in one row, and it has to stick. But he's up against a Squayatel player that's running a Glyce, so not sure if he's going to be able to find a value out of his leader ability this this match. So perhaps Mandy could try and convince himself that Gale's leader ability is more of a dead card, which is not entirely true at all, especially if he plays it with his card advantage at the very end. But it could be something that's going to help him try and work his way through this, at least in his own mind, as he faces a tough round. It's really going to come down to whether or not Android has an answer for all these neophytes that are going to come out from a Syngrim. Looks like he plays White Frost. White Frost is going to bring out the two Foglets. Again, just two Foglets. And I don't know if android has been holding one Foglet in hand the whole game or if this is a strat on just running two. He could Gales them for 12, which makes them not igniable. And it looks like that's what he's... He's leaning towards. Uh, I did just mention the difficulty of him keeping anything on the board against Skoya, but instead he's going to Griffin here. Uh, Griffin's an interesting card because it only targets units, so against Skoya in this iteration of the game, it's not going to do too much. Aglaise will come out, and she's going to Tremors to remove. Those Foglets from the board, knowing that they're the only way for Gales to get value out of his leader ability right now. But he, in comes Corinther, so here we go. Some more units on the board for Anarud and his monster deck. So there will be a chance for him here. Tremors again from <laughs> Nature's Wish. We'll remove that chance immediately. And now it's down to the nitty gritty. Only two cards left. Gontro Dim. Decoyed out in the second round. Gets played to no removal value. But eight strength onto the board. Nothing to really frown about. And another opportunity for Gales to get his ability off. But in comes the Syngrim. Syngrim's getting really good value here. It looks like we're up to 36 strength. So... The Tremors comes out from Anarid. He was holding it all along. And that, that's what card advantage is going to do to him. And then Gales will come in and just buff these Gontro Dim spawns. And that will be it. And Manti XD will drop round one against a monster player in the round of 32. Thank you for watching. I'm HG3. We'll move on to their second match in a moment. Just give me a minute to get there.